So the sponsor of today's video is Skillshare, and this is really great timing because this will get you your introduction into Python for my upcoming videos, where I'll be teaching you how to create your own AI or train your own AI and set up the environments in order to get cracking at it. Now you will need some basic Python in order to get going, creating your reward systems once I start the tutorial. And not only that, the first 1000 signups that use the links below will get a free premium membership. And that will open you to so many other classes. You have so so many things to go through. We have web development, applied control systems for engineering, speed controllers, so many crazy cool things, social media stuff, photography things that I'm just barely scratching the surface. Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So this video is not going to have any flight footage. It's only going to be an unboxing of a couple quadcopters I've received. And the reason for that is because I still have to get my paperwork ready for the new European regulations to go fly, which is really fun. Yay. So one quadcopter we have here, this is called the HLRC Wind 5. Now this thing is absolutely insane. I've gotten this frame before and you can't bend anything on this. The, the carbon fiber, the way they've designed it, the way they've cut it is just out of this world here. And let's just quickly take a look at some of the accessories they provide us and we'll check its weight and uh, go over the overall execution of this. And now for accessories is pretty minimal here. We just have our motor nuts and just some extra screws and two battery straps, really long battery straps actually, and some uh, zip ties in there. So let's move this to the side and take a closer look at this quadcopter here. So its overall weight is 294 grams as is out of the box. If we remove the uh, cover here, 294 grams still. And um, yeah, that's really it for this one. So for the variant I have right here, it's coming with 2207.5 1900 kV motor. And these are their newest motors, which are called the, I forgot, I don't even know how to pronounce it, but these were insane on the Sector V5 that I've tested, the six inch variant to be exact, absolutely insanely smooth motors here. So this is a bottom mount frame here, and they're using a 20 by 20 uh, stack, which is the ESC here. We also have a flight controller. And we have their new uh, Zeus mini video transmitter there that you can actually change the size of. Uh, now these don't generally get the best video transmitter coverage in a way, especially with these smaller ones. Usually for some reason, the smaller ones just don't perform as good as the bigger ones for some reason. That's just something to take into consideration. Not that it'll perform bad or anything, but generally the larger ones uh, tend to outperform the smaller nano sized video transmitters here. Now, as we can tell, we do have a low ESR capacitor, which is really nice to see. Um, I wish they've mounted it slightly differently. This kind of feels a bit too fragile, in my opinion, if you crash, but it does seem to be somewhat protected. We have this area here and we have this area here. So, you know, your chances of actually hitting the uh, capacitor here are very unlikely. Now, I'm loving the execution for a couple of reasons. And we can see the soldering job is very well. We have this little nice tape right here, not zip ties, which is a good thing. Um, also, something to take into consideration with any pre-made quadcopter, check every single screw before you go fly or you will break it. Yes, you will break it. If a motor comes off and the propeller is going crazy, it'll rip the motor out or the wire from the motor. There's so much damage that could happen. So that And that does happen. And a lot of people do complain about that. So you just keep that in mind when you pick up a new quadcopter here. Now for video transmitter mounting, it looks absolutely phenomenal. And are they using zip ties here? And these seem to be zip ties, I think. Nope, they're not zip ties. So it's, this one's rocking an XM Plus radio. And what's really nice is if you actually take a closer look here, you can, the way they've set it up is, is to kind of make it easy for you to bind because that could be usually one of the most annoying things. And for me, I hate the most if I have to take your quadcopter apart in order to bind it. The bind button is right there. You could access it through that hole, which is really nice. Now, I don't know how that's going to be with different receivers, but I'm pretty sure they'll have that covered as well. And for the camera, they're using a Foxier Predator Nano, which is a decent camera. I think I had a good latency last time I tested it, but I could be wrong. I completely forgot, actually, to be honest. And also another really nice thing is that the battery wires are not very long. So that does decrease the chances of you having um, extra noise uh, because the longer these wires are, actually, the more noise you do get into your, your whole system here. But again, we're, we're set up here with a nice capacitor. And what is the rating of this capacitor? So 1000 microfarad 35 volt here. So I don't know what their intention was with this. And um, I don't know if anybody really goes into bottom mount frames unless you're racing or you want to do some quick laps or something. Uh, but it is pretty heavy for a racer, which is roughly around 300 grams. However, um, that's due to the durability, the, the, the way that it's been designed, the way the carbon fiber, even the size of the carbon fiber that's everywhere is pretty insane here. So I think this will last quite a while, actually. Um, 
it's a really nice built quadcopter. The motors look insane. Uh, it's really gorgeous, actually. Really, really nice. So that's really it for the HLRC right here. And um, let's go ahead and move on to the next quadcopter. It's, this is a really nice one, like really nice. So the next one I have is an Eosheen. And uh, this one here, let's see. I haven't even opened these yet. Oh, wow. So this is Eosheen's... Uh, attempt at a long range, I think. I don't know how much this is going for. It'll be linked down below. You can check the price on that. Uh, it's pretty light as well. We'll check its weight right now. Let's just see some of the accessories before we go any further, actually. So for accessories, we get a battery strap. We get two sets of propellers. And to be exact, these are the Hurricane 4024 1.5 millimeter shaft uh, props here. And they're bi-blades, they're not tri-blades, and just some anti-slip and some extra screws. Nice, that's about it. So, let's take a look at the quadcopter here. First of all, we'll start off with the weight. So this is, uh, again, the LR version or the long-range version of Eosheen's uh, setup here. <clears throat> and it's 140 grams, which is, I think that's pretty good, no? With a battery, it'll be less than 250, that's for sure. Well, depending on what kind of battery you use, really. So let's put this to the side and let's grab a closer look here. So there's already an anti-slip, so it's again, it's a top mount battery frame. So this comes in two different variants. I have the Cadex Vista variant here, so there's obviously HD. And they're using a different antenna, it's, it's really long. And I could already see some issues probably. So when you're putting this uh, antenna inside, it's going to apply a lot of pressure on the connector inside. And as you could tell, we don't even have the... Uh, piece that actually holds the connector into place. They're not using it because I think the way they have uh, soldered it into place and I yeah, just be very careful with this and make sure your antenna didn't pop off while you're actually putting it inside So that's something to kind of take into consideration always double check that IPEX port uh, When you get it yours might be different, but that's something to take uh, take a look at now There is something I really didn't like about this, but I forgot how it is with the other ones this thing is really flexible, like really flexible. Like um, you're definitely gonna break the bottom plate in a crash. Um, it is a one piece bottom plate here. Mounting solution, 20 by 20. We also have another 20 by 20 and that's about it. Oh, wow, look at that. I think it's the Halloween theme. If you look at that, that's a face right there. That's pretty cool. Um, that's, that's the coolest thing I think on this whole thing right here right now. Now, the execution is decent. It's not the best. The soldering is okay here. I'm more of afraid of the soldering on the Cadex Vista, at least on mine. Really difficult to tell, but the soldering isn't the best on the Cadex Vista, but at, currently from looking at it, it seems like it would do the job. Now, I also do see a low ESR capacitor built over there or just installed over there. It's probably very difficult for you to see it here, uh, but there is one. But you could, you could see the lead right there for, for one of the capacitor's legs. Uh, I don't like the fact that it's exposed. Um, that's something uh, it's, it's a big no-no to me, and you can actually see a bit more of it down here. You can see the legs going through those holes and getting soldered to the top there. Uh, I wish Yashin would have covered these up with some heat shrink. Uh, this is it's not dangerous, but it does have a higher probability of it shorting out. For example, if one of the Cadex fires uh, wires go bad and somehow the exposed copper was inside and you just touch these two, you'll fry almost everything on here. You'll fry probably the, the, the Cadex Vista module and also the ESC. So that's something uh, I would definitely look into here. Now for ESC and flight control, there's some Eosheen branded ones. Um, and it's just all by connectors. So if by any chance you break a connector, then basically you're going to have to probably have some crazy mad soldering skills to fix that or and just get a new flight controller. Um, if that does happen, I recommend you probably just purchase yourself a different stack and not get the same stack. Um, you, you know, that that's what I would do if I ever ruin the stack on here, the flight control or the ESC, I'd get a different brand one. Maybe I'd go with Flywoo. Now, the motors are pretty interesting. I'm sure these are uh, really good motors because I actually forgot who did these for them. These are not ESC. Well, I mean, they are ESC motors, but they're rebranded motors. And I can tell it's a proper company because usually the, most of the Yoshin motors will have some play. These don't have any play. And they look really nice, this color. I don't know how long this color is going to last, though. Um, but it does look really, really nice. However, I do wish it was a bit more blue other than the VTX here. Maybe with these screws, that would have been really nice. Maybe some blue heat shrink or that wrap that goes around this. I highly recommend you put uh, tape all over here. 
Uh, just it'll just be a lot better that way for this one. So yeah, uh, I don't know how much this costs, and uh, definitely check the links down below. And if you use one, let us know down in the comments section. Let's go ahead and check out the other quadcopter I have. So this is a LOL 3, but I swear to God, I remember I reviewed this, but I'm guessing this is a different variant here. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the accessories really quickly. So we have some carbon fiber. These are really nice if you forget to bring your, uh, your prop remover tool, whatever you might be using. Um, this is an empty bag, probably something fell out of it. And we get two sets of propellers, and these seem to be, what are these? These are some Racer Star propellers, which probably might do okay, but I'd highly recommend you get yourself some proper propellers when you get the chance. Uh, these might be okay for now. You get some extra screws, uh, some extra antenna thingies. Actually, they're not extra. You'll need these when you install your receiver because it doesn't come with a receiver here. So, and we get a battery strap right there. Only one battery strap? Yep, only one battery strap we have here. The original LOL 3 that I flew was absolutely phenomenal, but there was a big issue that a lot of people complained about, which was that the propellers were in the shot. So this is a remodified one, and look how empty this thing is. It's insane. Uh, so they're going with sort of a dead cat style. I don't know what this would be. Hopefully it flies decent. This might need a pid tune. Uh, hopefully they did pid tune it because the layout isn't, you know, traditional X type of layout. As you could look at how the motors are here. Look how close that is. That's pretty crazy. Um, so yeah, this will be, it seems like a squashed X in a way. If we don't look at the arms and we kind of just look at the motors, it looks like a squashed X uh, layout here. Now let's go ahead and just grab the weight. So this thing has an XT30 connector. Just keep that in mind. Um, it doesn't have a full-blown XT. So it's 186 grams. It's a bit heavier than the uh, lightweight or the long-range variant of that, which I forgot its name. But again, all these are linked down below. This is also a Cadex Vista variant. So it's pretty light for a Cadex Vista build here. Uh, obviously, we'll still have to install our receiver. And usually these are meant for um, SBUS. And what is this? An F4? So if this is an F4... Yes, it's an F4, and you put IBUS here, it won't work. So, and there's, I don't think there's any documentation inside, or is there? It doesn't seem like there's any documentation inside to tell you if you had an IBUS where to actually put that. So just keep that in mind. You might have to just remove that, put it somewhere else here. Um, yeah, probably, you probably end up having to do that. So it's an F4. Um, I don't like the look of the ESC. I also don't like the execution on this at all whatsoever. Um, look at that. That's not really... Um, yeah, you see that? So I would definitely, before I fly this, I would actually work on uh, fixing these motors. They cut this one too short here. I could see that. And yeah, but there's still a little bit of slack. But yeah, definitely double check the, I think they went to a different manufacturer to make this because it, obviously the execution is not nowhere near as clean as the other one that we just saw here. So I definitely do some touch-ups before I get to fly this. Now the frame is pretty rigid, but it does have some flex, and um, yeah, so just keep that in mind. Again, it's a one-piece bottom plate here, and we do have a lot of mounting solutions, so if you ever want to do train some stuff out, we have 16 by 16 double stack, so we have one here and one here. We have 20 by 20 here and a 20 by 20 here, and that's really it for stacking solutions. Camera protection looks really great. They have a 3D printed part around it. Now when you do purchase this, I am really afraid uh, of the whole... Uh, ESC here and the way they've set this up the flight controller you really never really have to worry about that much But it's always about the ESC the ESC is the thing that I think is just the heart of all your components Because that's where the raw battery connects to and that's where everything is running off of really So if anything goes bad with it, it's connected to basically everything you usually have your uh, video transmitters Cadex Vista whatever Connected to it if you don't have voltage regulator the motors just about everything. So um, just be very cautious with this. Um, the LR looks much better, or the long-range one, Eoshin, looked much better. But this is really light, and it looks like a nice platform to replace components on. But, um, yeah, we'll probably play around with this. I might do a 6S build. I might change everything out of this one and do something else with it. But time will tell, and we'll get to see that in the upcoming days. And, well, that's really it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Sorry, I don't have any flight footage, but I got to get my paperwork in order in order to go fly. So everything is linked down below if you can check them out. Those are great support channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.